in a way it's nice to sort of smash the stereotypes and sort of say, well, that's perfectly fine, why do you think I couldn't be? To put them right and to feel their palpable embarrassment and then chat to them about what I'd done, that felt like a small triumph. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could have um, strong characters in movies and, and in TV shows that, that, are, that are women doing science? Just raise the profile of women working in science, engineering and technology. And this is what Ada Lovelace Day is all about. So I'm a physicist and I design particle accelerators, quite large machines that take particles from inside the atom and give them energy, accelerate them up to almost the speed of light. In my research group, um, I'm the only woman and there's eight men, but when I visit conferences, it's about something like 10% women in my field. A typical gig for me would be at a night where most of the other performers are male and most of the other performers are working on their laptops. And so I'm an oddity in two respects. One, because I come out with robots, and two, because I'm a woman. And we still are in the minority in electronic music. In terms of the male presence in marine biology, we're actually really lucky that um, biology is one of the sciences that does attract lots of women. It certainly isn't as, as biased as other, other parts of science. I don't tend to find it male-dominated at all. Certainly television is isn't. It's a meritocracy. You, you can either do the job or you can't. When it comes to the web, I think when I first started uh, doing things on the web, there tended to be many more men than women, but I never felt it. I tend to out alpha male most men. The only times when sometimes I can feel that people think what I do is unusual for a woman is actually in dealing with just the general public who sort of might be surprised, oh you're a physicist, oh that's quite an unusual thing for a woman to do. There I was, working really hard on stage with my robots and all the software that I'd written on my laptop running between the two. It was a really good gig. At the end of the night two chaps came out of the audience and they obviously liked it because they walked onto the stage. They walked straight past me to the percussionist at the back and asked him how he made all the clever stuff work. I mean, as a marine scientist, you get out there and you're thrown into some fairly sort of hair-raising situations. You know, you're on boats, you're in high seas, um, you're diving in high currents. Um, and I think maybe you have to bust through that stereotype that maybe women aren't as, as keen to take risks and to put themselves in uncomfortable situations. I think the jury's still out on why there aren't enough women in science. And I think you've got to look at the evidence and not go for the sort of claptrap about it's, you know... It's about something about women. Having this more kind of emotional connection with technology or science tends to bring in more women. I spend a lot of time going into schools and speaking to school children about science. The boys will be a bit more excited and switched on by uh, some of the explosions and things. And sometimes the girls will be actually more switched on when I get to the point of, OK, that's exciting. But what are we going to use this for? The worst thing you can do is actually ask somebody like me why there aren't more women in science, because I don't understand what it is about science and tech that would put anyone off, because it is our culture. Every time you listen to music on the radio, every time you go onto Twitter or you know, open your laptop, you're engaging with science and tech. The more we can bring those role models out, the better, I think. There's you know, really strong female characters. I went to the library because I'd heard about the Radiophonic Workshop, 12 years old, opened it up, and there was a photograph of Daphne Oram, a woman who not only co-founded the Radiophonic Workshop, but she'd built her own form of synthesis. So as a 12-year-old girl, I could point to that and say, I want to be her. Recently I was very lucky to meet one of my all-time ocean science heroes, um, a marine biologist from America called Eugenie Clark. Um, she's now in her 90s and has been exploring the oceans for decades. She was off exploring the world having adventures and I wanted to do the same thing. My role models when I first got interested in science um, were Richard Feynman and Carl Sagan. And I don't think you need to have a female role model. When I was an undergraduate student, I liked cooking, so I used to occasionally bring in sort of a cake or something for someone's birthday. And once I sort of accidentally or off the cuff said to one of my lecturers, um, oh, well, if physics ever fails me, I'll always make someone a good housewife. And he turned to me and he looked me in the face and he said, don't you ever say that because he had so much confidence in my ability and that, that really helped me and all the people who've supported me like that have really helped me to, to gain confidence in my own ability. Mm -hmm.